uh, a bel cavallo for <clears throat> for Mrs. Canales, Nora Canales. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Steve Lopez and Matt Lopez for Sylvia and Castillo. All right. All right, Mr. Lopez, are you ready to proceed on your motion? We're ready, Your Honor. Judge, uh, I'm not ready. I've, I filed a motion for continuance on all of this. Uh, I'd like to for for the judge for the court to consider uh, a continuance before we proceed, and there's there's some reasons for that. All right, uh, I have not received your motion for continuance, um, Mr. Lopez. Have you received it? Your Honor, I received a copy of a document um, requesting a continuance. It was an unverified motion. I know that some of the things that were filed by Mr. Cavada's office were rejected and returned. I'm not sure if he resubmitted. Judge, uh, I received a copy of their pleadings yesterday at 5 p.m., uh, close to 5 p.m. Uh, by fax. Uh, so uh, we're not ready for anything. Uh, we need to review the pleadings. We need to amend our pleadings if necessary. Uh, there's just uh, too many, too much controversy on, on this case for the, for uh, to decide anything today. Even uh, uh, their request for uh, <clears throat> injunctive relief uh, is premature. I just got notice yesterday. So um, there's. Uh, Many fact issues that need to be uh, revealed through discovery a discovery process. This is uh, this will be a highly contested case. Um, I'm asking for about two weeks uh, for any kind of a hearing. Your Honor, I I can't explain why Mr. Cavada would not have seen pleadings until yesterday, but I can tell the court, as is reflected in the e-filing system as well as our certificates of service. That Mr. Cavada's office was served with our pleadings on October 24th on the first round. And then we did serve an additional pleading, a application for temporary administration after receiving Mr. Cavada's purported motion for continuance. I understand that he may need more time to prepare, Your Honor. However, this case requires immediate attention of Your Honor. Um, at this point, there are two people, Ms. Nora Canales and Sylvia Ann Castillo, claiming to be the surviving spouse of Mr. Johnny Canales. At this time, Ms. Nora Canales is in possession of a significant portion, if not all of the property of the decedent. And she is, to the best of our understanding, using and administering that property without any kind of court oversight, which is what necessitated our request for an accounting and also for the temporary injunction to keep her from spending or depleting or any way alienating that estate property. Um, I mentioned that we filed a pleading um, after receiving the motion for continuance. We actually also requested a temporary administration to put a Band-Aid on this situation, put somebody in charge. That way there is not any depletion of this estate while we await the discovery process. I will also tell the court that we do have a petition pending in the 319th District Court under cause number 2024 DCV 4543G, and that is a petition for declaratory judgment seeking to have the court declare that the alleged marriage between Nora Canales and Mr. Canales was void because Mr. Canales was married at the time that he entered into a relationship with Ms. Nora Canales. So again, okay. Your Honor. Okay, please don't interrupt because my court reporter is taking down everything that we say. So Mr. Lopez, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and so I, I do understand the need or the desire to have time to prepare a response. We think that Mr. Cavada should have some minimal time to do that. But in the meantime, this temporary injunction is absolutely necessary to preserve the estate. And even one step further, a temporary administration is absolutely necessary to preserve this estate. We cannot leave today with allowing one party who has a dubious claim at best to manage and control all of this significant estate. So we would ask the court if the court is going to consider 
giving council some time to respond that give us this band-aid that will help preserve this estate. Thank you. All right, Mr. Cavada. Uh, yes, if I may, Judge. Um, uh, they filed uh, a suit to declare uh, whether a marriage was was valid and is going to be heard in January in the 319th court. So they're 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 getting ahead of themselves. They haven't even established that that marriage existed. They are seeking that from a court. So this case is nowhere near any point to make any decision regarding the the claimant, Miss Castillo. Uh, just so uh, from I'm I'm not testifying, but I'm stating that preliminary investigation has shown a number of things that might be of interest to the court. One is that uh, Ms. Castillo was married at age 17. That may be an invalid marriage. That that, for, that would be for Judge Stith to decide. Uh, the uh, Ms. Castillo was married three times since the original alleged marriage back in 1980. She'd been married three times and divorced from th three times. So there, there's probably issues of estoppel or latches uh, in regard to her claim, yet they want they want to succeed right now when they don't have they don't even have their foot in the door yet. Okay. Uh, in 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 addition, they for uh, uh, in a, uh, a, a request for injunction, there should be some I idea that they might succeed at some point. There's well, no they have, to have a probable right to recovery. Yeah. So uh, I would uh, I would like some time to respond before the court does anything. Nobody's selling anything. Uh, uh, there's no reason to. Uh, I don't think they they've established just because they allege that they were married and that uh, that that that's sufficient uh, to grant them relief. It just it's just not enough. Uh, it's undeniable. It, it we'll find it through discovery, but she's been married three times since. So if she's claiming a marriage now, how how could she do that unless it's it's a bigamy situation over and over? So uh, th yeah, that, I think we can establish that. If I may respond, Your Honor. Um, yes, Mr. Lopez. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cavalli used the expression that we haven't even gotten our foot in the door. I'll draw his attention and the court's attention to a document that was e-filed earlier today, and that is a certified copy of the divorce, excuse me, of the marriage certificate between Ms. Castillo and Mr. Canales for a divorce that was performed on August 30th, 19, excuse me, August 13th, 1980. And I will offer that as um, Castillo exhibit number one, if the court will permit share screen. Yes, give me Judge, one. We think that there is a possibility that there was fraud committed back then, 1980, and we think we can show that. But we need time. We need time and we need discovery. I certainly don't mind giving you additional time to prepare. I received the application and the motion for temporary injunction on the 31st of October. So I don't mind giving you time, but I do agree with Mr. Lopez that a temporary administrator needs to be point, appointed immediately and all the assets need to be either frozen or a temporary injunction, even though it's just temporary, needs to be in place if the evidence supports it. Your Honor, um, thank you. And we can prepare an order to that effect. Um, I do want to continue to share screen to sort of set the record straight and also have this certified copy of the marriage certificate be admitted into evidence. Um, this second page contains the certification from the Duval County clerk. The first page is the actual marriage certificate. We offer it as Castillo's exhibit number one. Any objections, Mr. Cavada? Yes, Your Honor. It needs to be investigated to whether it's, that document is um, <clears throat> valid and whether the background on that for a 17 year old uh, can get married, in fact. So well, it's possible that it's a void marriage to begin well, with. Those are, it, those are issues for the 319th District Court. My job here is to preserve the assets of the estate. So do you have any objection to this document being admitted into evidence? 
I made my objection, Judge. Uh, I don't okay. think it's verified. You're hearing no legal objection. Your objection is overruled. Exhibit number one is admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, with respect to the temporary administration, um, we understand that because of the competing claims, it may not be best to put one of the parties as the administrator. We I would totally be, agree with you. We, we would be fine with a third party disinterested fiduciary and attorney, somebody that the court knows and trusts. Um, with the understanding, of course, this is potentially a very con contested issue and a sizable estate. So we would ask somebody that is well experienced in these matters. Yes, I absolutely have someone in mind and I will appoint somebody that's both well versed in um, family law matters as well as estate matters. With respect to the temporary injunction that we prayed for, um, which in some essentially freezes the assets of the estate and preserves those assets, is the court granting that injunction, Your Honor? Yes. And um, I, additionally, Your Honor, is the court required to who the, is it, my inquiries to who the court is considering for a third party? Yes, so let's Robertson. Uh, there, there, uh, the, I need to investigate a little bit. There may be a conflict of interest with her uh, because of uh, contact between her and uh, Miss uh, her office and um, uh, Miss Castillo prior to any of this. If that is the case, Your Honor, and I, I don't know one way or another, I, I would ask for an alternative. Uh, uh, please ask uh, Miss uh, Robinson whether she had contact with Miss Castillo. Your Honor, if, if it's helpful, I can reach out to Ms. Robertson now and see if she's available to come on the Zoom. Okay, let's take a brief recess then. Thank you. Thank you. I'll reach out. 